I'm Jara with Wicked Prepared. Today we're going to make a cornbread mix in a jar. Box mixes are a great thing to have in the pantry. They're such a time saver and they're so convenient because we all know families are really busy nowadays and we don't always have a lot of time to pull together dinner. But at the same time, it feels really good to be able to serve your family something that was homemade that you made from scratch. So this is a way to have the best of both worlds. We're going to make a mix that we have made completely from scratch. And I find that this is even better than the store-bought mixes because the store-bought mixes that I've used for cornbread require eggs and milk. And this is going to be just add water. So we're gonna use uh, powdered shelf stable versions of the eggs, the milk, buttermilk, all of those butter, all of those ingredients. So when it comes time for dinner, all you have to do is grab this jar off the shelf and just add water, mix it up and you're good to go. So I find this even more convenient than the store-bought mixes and you feel good about giving your family something that you made from scratch. These also make great gifts. Anything in a jar makes a great gift. You could pair this with some sort of a chili meal in a jar or a taco soup meal in a jar or lots of other things and have a really great gift for someone. The ingredients you're going to need today are some pretty basic pantry staples. We're going to use flour, sugar, cornmeal, bisquick or any kind of baking mix like that. If your purpose for making this um, mix from scratch is that you really want to control the ingredients that go into your food, you might want to make your own biscuit mix from scratch. But if not, you can use bisquick or any other brand or a store brand. And we're also going to use baking soda and salt. And then we've got our powdered shelf stable ingredients, eggs. I'm using some honey powder, butter powder, and some powdered buttermilk. You don't need much equipment for a meal in a jar. We're going to use, of course, a quart size mason jar with a lid. We're going to use our measuring cups and spoons. You need a canning funnel. This has a really nice wide opening so that you can get all your ingredients into the jar without making too much of a mess. And the only other thing we really need today is this is a, a mesh strainer. This isn't really necessary, but I like to use this to strain any lumps, um, little clumps out of my baking soda. I always do that when I cook. If you've ever been into a cookie and got a hard little lump of baking soda, that's pretty unpleasant, so I try to avoid that. So I always sift my baking soda through a strainer. So we're gonna start with, we'll start with the cornmeal. We've got cornbread. We're gonna use a half a cup of cornmeal. Now I tend to use a chopstick to level off my dry ingredients to make sure that I have just the right amount. Okay. I wanted to adjust the camera just a little, make sure that you can see what I'm doing here. So we've got our cornmeal. Next we need a half a cup of flour. And I actually keep, usually in my flour I have a chopstick and a spoon. My kids have been cooking with my ingredients, so it's not where it should be, but I usually keep a chopstick and a little plastic spoon right in here for measuring with. Because you want to just spoon your flour in lightly. You never want to pack your flour. This is just how you would do it no matter what you're baking. So you spoon in the flour. The kids know to do this, but they don't necessarily know to keep the spoon and chopstick right where they ought to be. So I spoon it in lightly and use a chopstick to level it off. You got your half a cup of flour. Now this recipe is based on something I found on a website called Make Ahead Meal Mom. And this is half of the recipe that she used because I wanted to make sure that it would fit into a mason jar. And you could also make this in a larger batch and store it in a Ziploc bag. So now we're going to have sugar. Once again, just level it off. Half a cup of sugar. Level that down. And then we're also going to need a half a cup of the Bisquick mix. Okay. 
Double that right off. Half a cup of Bisquick in the jar. Okay, next we need a half a teaspoon of salt. Now, if you've seen me cooking before, you know I have these handy dandy little spice jars and all I have to do is give two clicks and that's a half a teaspoon. Each click is a quarter teaspoon. So next we've got our baking soda. That's gonna be half a teaspoon. Sorry, I've got dogs in the background. Hopefully they'll quiet down. A half a teaspoon and like I said, I always sift this through a mesh strainer just to make sure that there are no lumps. So that goes in there. After that, we're gonna have two tablespoons of our powdered eggs. And this is one of the secrets that lets you have a just add water shelf stable mix. This egg powder is great for so many things. So one tablespoon. two tablespoons. Okay, so I've got my oxygen absorber still in here. The oxygen absorber is what keeps these foods fresh in the can, but they're one time use only. So once you open the can, you really just discard those because there's no use in keeping them. Okay, so we've got two tablespoons of the egg powder and now we've got the buttermilk powder. I left this in the can so you could see this is pretty widely available at just any supermarket. I got this at Walmart. I'm sure you can also get it on Amazon and lots of other places, but use a clean spoon. So this is going to be two and a half tablespoons. I'm going to use the lid to level this one. One. Two. And then I have this half tablespoon measure that came with a different set of tablespoons, so measuring spoons. All right, so we've got two and a half tablespoons of the buttermilk powder. Now this is not going to completely fill this jar, and I knew it wouldn't, but at the same time, I really don't think I could have fit um, the whole batch, a double batching, because this is almost three cups, and this only holds four cups, so it's not gonna be quite full. But if you use a quart size Ziploc bag, you probably can fit the whole batch, a double batch. But I just wanted to have it in the jar because I didn't like the idea of keeping um, Ziploc containers on my pantry shelves. It just didn't seem like it was gonna work as well. So I'm gonna put in two tablespoons of honey powder. So we'll have a nice honey cornbread. We also need some butter powder in here. We're going to use a quarter cup of the butter powder. So that's a quarter cup. Level this one off too. And that's it. That's how easy it is to put together a cornbread mix in a jar and just add water. So what you would do is add about a cup and a quarter of water to this mix. I would dump the mix in a bowl and then whisk it up to combine all those ingredients because we just layered them in the jar. So whisk it up and then add your water, stir your water in really well. And then this would fill a nine inch or eight inch square around cake pan, which is usually the size that a small mix from the grocery store makes also. Of course, if you wanted to do double the batch or you wanted to take two jars or two bags, then you could make a 9 by 13 pan of cornbread. So if you're feeding a lot of people, you could do the whole batch. Now if you want a nice spread to go with your cornbread, what about a honey butter? Especially if you were going to give this as a gift, this would make a lovely gift with a nice little jar of honey butter. So to make the honey butter, all you need is our Thrive Life honey and our Thrive Life butter and some water. So we're going to use a half a cup of the butter powder. It smells so good. 
You can also use this to sprinkle on popcorn, to sprinkle on veggies, any place that you might want butter. And this is real butter. So we've got a half a cup of the butter powder. And we're going to take a quarter cup of the honey powder, honey crystals. Just a quarter cup of the honey, and half a cup of the butter. Now, if you wanted to make a cinnamon honey butter, you could just add a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon to this and you'd have a cinnamon honey butter. And into this, we're going to add two tablespoons of water. I love this nifty little teeny little measuring cup. It's perfect for measuring small amounts, tablespoons. I feel like it's more accurate than measuring liquids in a, in a spoon like this. So we're going to put this in and we're going to whisk it until it forms a spread. Now you could also do this in um, like a KitchenAid with a whisk attachment on. That would be really probably a lot easier, but I didn't want to have to run that really loud, um, really loud motor in my video. So you can see this has come together into a beautiful uh, creamy honey spread. I don't know if you can see that, but let's give it a little bit more whisking. And then if you have a small jar, I have one of these, um, Little jars, any little jar would work. And scrape this right into your jar and you will have a lovely spread for your cornbread or any bread really. And these make really nice gifts, nice hostess gifts. Could be a teacher gift. Have a jar of this honey butter or cinnamon honey butter right alongside. A bread mix. Whoops. Made a little mess. But swipe that off. Mmm, that is delicious. And you've got a nice jar of honey butter to go with your cornbread. Stocking your shelves with some of these homemade cornbread mixes gives you the convenience of a just add water mix with the good feeling of knowing you're giving your family something homemade from scratch. If you enjoyed this video, won't you hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more? I'm Jara with Wicked Prepared. Survive today, thrive tomorrow.